Yeah, I service on Sunday night that we can kind of get to know him and talk to him and this type of stuff and most everything is pretty much starting back to normal the ladies met, met yesterday and they're going good and uh, I don't think we have a whole lot more going on movie night remember that it starts January 13th and the first movie they're going to have is the blind so, remember to bring a snack to share bring a snack that's how you get that's your way to get in. If you don't bring a snack, they won't let you in. A shareable snack. Somebody put on the table and everybody has a little bit of on that. Okay, brother, you come right in. He's going to start and do the prayer request. Thank you. Now, I have gotten to meet a few of you, and I, I, I'm usually pretty good about names, and some names stick out more than others. Now, uh, Brother John Ray, I've been talking with him for a while now, and he is, uh, uh, everything was clear and good until the trip on the way up here. I had no problem with remembering Brother Johnny Ray's name, but my wife and I were riding all this way over here, and we was listening to some Johnny Lee on the way over. <laughs> and she said, I wonder uh, what Brother Johnny Lee is like. And I said, don't start now. <laughs> I have done my best. <laughs> and try to remember every name that I can remember. And if I call him Johnny Lee, I don't think that's going to go over very well. But uh, I got uh, Bill, Buck, I got a couple of Jameses. Let me remember, there's a, uh, let's see, James back here. Uh, we got Tony. Uh, we got another James right here. Now, my understanding is we got several Karens. If your name is Karen, would you please raise your hand? Karen. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Just one? There's She's in the back there. There's a Carol. She's in the back. Oh, okay. Two Karens. There's yeah. a Karen S and a Karen C. Yeah. Uh, so we've got 
and, and I assure you I'll, I'll be able to pick up on that eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is good to be here, and we're thankful the Lord got us here safe. And uh, we're going to go over these prayer requests this evening. And it's, we'll just start in order. Y'all got, y'all have one of these? All right. Uh, how about Paul Rupert? Brother Paul, back here in the back. How are you doing? Everything coming along? Yeah. And what kind of prayer needs do we need to keep praying about? The surgery went well? Everything turned out good. Amen. Getting along just fine and healing just fine. Awesome. So continue <clears throat> prayers for Brother Paul. Uh, we got Tony. Tony, I just talked to you a minute ago, and uh, you had that liver resection, and you're having some gallbladder issues yeah. right now. What, what you got going on, buddy? Just waiting for surgery. Just waiting for surgery. Yeah. yeah. Any kind of idea of what the doctors are saying? I just got to wait for them to do it. It's just getting a schedule. Yeah, they're going to remove your gallbladder? Yeah. Eden won't never be the same again, bro. So <laughs> we'll, have deal, we'll have to deal with that pain all the time. That's right. So continue prayers for Tony and the doctors so that they can go ahead and get that scheduled and going. Uh, Larry Montanus, does anybody got any kind of update on that? Give me kind of any idea. He had some shoulder surgery. Shoulder surgery. That's pretty hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> shoulder surgery. He's doing better. It's just real sore on him, but he's doing good. He had that about a week ago. About a week ago. He needs some healing and some time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Kayla Whitehead and Baby White. I done run the first one off. Kind of hard to keep her in her seat there. I got you. They, they had him at the, the emergency room. Um, no, it's his, the Kayla. Kayla actually was having some stomach issues and she had to go to Carol. Carol How, how's you? Kayla and the baby? He's, he's doing good. He is pre-me and some issues, but God is good, and, Amen. and he's doing doing good for them. Tell you, that's starting to be kind of a regular thing. They they, they come out and look at <coughs> because they're a little early. They had to stay under a warmer or something like that. And, uh, but, man, I tell you what, technology's come a long ways, and so we're thankful the Lord's had a hand in that. Kelsey, Vanader, and baby Mark. That's my niece, and I heard yesterday that she had to quit chemo. She's pregnant. She's 35 weeks. Mm -hmm. greater purpose than one to give her life, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Uh, Myra Fazale. Come on now. You sure? All right. I think y'all might have that wrong, but. There's a bunch of them around. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> what was that last name? Bustle. I won't do it no more. Bustle. I, I just got, I just got fussed at. I got fussed. I got last name Fussle. All right. All right. <laughs> Myra Fussell, how's she? That is. She's her daughter-in-law said Sunday that she's doing much, much better. And they was talking about another surgery, but they're not sure mm -hmm. now. So. All right, continue prayers for Myra then. Ellen Hurst? All right. Uh, one of the things that I learned early on uh, about prayer let me tell you something. It is one of a Christian's greatest tools. Amen. I mean, it, it is just, and uh, sometimes we, we we see a prayer list, and it's just the names on a piece of paper. And I love being able to take time and pray for these people individually, so I, I, I try to know them the best possible. And one of the things that I've seen on here is that y'all got some uh, addresses of, of these military people. You know, somebody took time to, to send them a letter. I mean, how powerful and meaningful that would be. Uh, your shut-ins, a couple of them here, uh, Charles Grimes, Ruth Helen Grimes, they've got the addresses right on here, and, and a visit or even a letter or something like that. Uh, prayer is, is, is very, very powerful. So when it comes to prayer needs, I, I take them very seriously. Uh, there's nothing greater than I would ask for somebody. If somebody asked if they can do something for me, I said, please pray for me. Mm -hmm. Please pray for me. And it can make a huge difference. And I've seen where prayer is just 
I've seen miracles coming. Mom was praying for children for years and years and years. They lived the, the sons lived their life in sin for 50 years, and then later on they they given their life to Christ and changed everything because the mama wouldn't give up. Amen. Amen. Uh, so when I'm asking you this, I'm sincere when I ask. I want to know. I want I want Tony whatever. If I'm not here and you don't see me again, guess what? You're gonna be being prayed for, and that's how serious I take it. And so praying for people even if you don't know them. I mean, man, listen. Our great intercessor is Jesus Christ. Yes, he delivers it up to the yes. Father. And it's the same for us. We can intercede on each other's behalf. Yes. So it's a powerful tool. So when I'm asking you these things about Ellen Hurst, if, if what we did back where I come from is we put a name of whoever mentioned that person to lift them up in prayer so that if we can check up and follow up on them. And uh, so it's very important. Abel Mendoza. Abel's doing better. Abel's doing better. Uh, Okay. Johnny? Alasi. Alasi. He went to be with the Lord. Mm. Amen. And so does that mean the Alisi? Alisi. The Alisi family needs prayer. Yes. And was that just a, a community person or is that somebody's relative down? I mean, Alisi is a member here. Okay. That's her brother-in-law. I got you. Mary Martin. Sharon Ham. She's um, started her radiation. She had surgery. Mm -hmm. This uh, Kelsey and the baby, and knowing that uh, cancer is going to eat her up so that she can give that baby enough time to survive. Worthy of some prayer, amen. amen. Share it, hand. I just hate the word cancer. It's just off. Uh, but we'll be praying for Share it, hand. Cecil Buckhalter. He's doing good. Doing good. Like, stay on the prayer list good or come off the prayer list good? He didn't come off. He had uh, three stents put in and a heart valve that he had recuperating very, very well. Yes, sir. Shirley Fruit. Did I get that right? Yes, she's also, she has breast cancer. Breast cancer. <coughs> I'm not sure how it's. All right, uh, so she got a family here or somebody who added her to the prayer list? Uh, it's Teresa. It's Teresa Lacey's sister. Sister-in-law. Lacey. Phyllis Bark, uh, Baker. Phyllis Baker. Phyllis is Robin's yeah. mom, and Robin is out in California right now because her dad, which is on the list also, Doug Baker, has stomach cancer. So Robin's out there helping take care of her mom and dad. I got you. He's right across the way. Yeah. Sharpen family. He's a, he, he's a young man battling cancer and everything. And it's just day by day. Shelby Coe. Brother Coe, is that some of your people? Yes, uh, my wife, she's uh, had some ongoing heart issues, uh, waiting for a valve replacement, and uh, having a hard time getting into the doctors. Wow. Else sometimes. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's aggravating and she just has to deal with it day to day. Yes, sir. Prayers for Miss Shelby. Uh, heart ain't nothing to play with, is it, brother? Mm -hmm. Tony Clark and family. Leah Shira. Shira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was real close on that when I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Shira. But you see how fast they were to correct me. A couple of them, they knew. They knew this. He ain't going to get it. Leah Shire. This is a young lady with heart problems, and I don't know more than that. She's doing better. She's back to work. Amen. Answer prayers, then. Robert Mitchell. <coughs> David G. Levi Patterson. Jenny. 
Ma'am? Doing better. Doing better. Wanda Blaylock. That's Monica Carroll's sister. She's still in the hospital. She has COPD real bad. She's a uh, CHF, which is congestive heart failure also. And um, they're trying to get the fluids off of her. And what else? Oh, she's got, she's, her heart troubles her. She needs a pacemaker, but they won't do anything until they get her. And right. her kidneys are going bad. Yeah, the kidney doctor came in and said that um, she was from uh, severe to critical in her kidney kid status. Mm -hmm. She's still in the hospital. You gotta get with me better before she had other yeah, things, that's, that's giving they're, everything out of whack. They're keeping her in the hospital, trying to get the fluids off of her so they move her to a rehab uh, nursing home area. Right. And, um, until she gets better and then they'll discuss a pacemaker after that. She's Amen. in real good spirits. Yeah. Amen. She's, she's a member here. But you know, as children of God, we can be in good spirits even when things are going wrong, uh -huh. it seems like, because uh, we have that blessed assurance and that peace. Amen. That no matter what happens, we get to go be in glory. Yes, amen. Uh, St. Thessalonians uh, said, y'all don't, you don't have to worry about the dead like the, the world has to worry about them, you know. We're good. We have that hope and peace Amen. of an eternity with Jesus. Pat Smith. She's supposed to go to MRI today. She's got a lot going on with her. She melanoma. fell and it's <coughs> pretty bad. Fell and she fell and she's got a lot of other issues also. All right. Continue prayers for Pat. Roy Buck Alter. He had uh, scheduled for urinary tract infection initially. He was waiting to have a prostate operation. Right. But the infection came and he went and was in hospital for that. Got out and then wound up having to go back. But finally he's had the operation and he seems to be recuperating okay. Amen. Amen. Rick Mullis. He passed away Christmas Day. Yes. Let's pray for the Mullis family. And if uh, he had a relationship with our Heavenly Father, then guess what? He got healed. There ain't no doubt. I ain't got to worry about any of that anymore. Doug Baker. I'm with you on that one, brother. I'll be praying for them also. That's awesome. So y'all keep uh, Doug Baker in your prayers for salvation. Now we've got many of these caregivers. We've got uh, unspoken requests. Uh, any unspoken here tonight? Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, our law enforcement officers, church, our sister churches, uh, disaster victims. I tell you, one thing about disasters, never seems to fail. So you can read it in Scripture. When bad things happen, people come together. And oftentimes, they end up getting closer to the Lord because of this. And there's no accident. He didn't, it didn't happen by circumstances. And sometimes it's to draw people closer to Him. Uh, just like on 9-11. I don't know if y'all remember that. But man, let me tell you how the country came together. People came together and people started worshiping the Lord. And you've never seen so much stuff about Jesus and God on television during that time. But then guess what? A little while later, when they stopped allowing all that on TV, man, just, just kind of died down. Country started doing like this again. 
Uh, so we need to pray for our country. We need to pray that, or for our leaders. We need to pray for all things. And um, so that we can focus on what is good and right and pure, all these wonderful things that we put in our heads and minds. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask Brother John Ray, if you would, lift his prayer request up and uh, ask for God's blessing on tonight's teaching, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together as brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ. We have come together to worship and to praise you and thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for uh, uh, Brother Mike and, and Sister Robin for being here tonight bringing the lesson to us and I pray that we would have open hearts and open minds, dear Lord, that we would receive your word through your Holy Spirit, through Brother Mike. We would put everything else aside. And, and before we get started, I would ask that you please forgive us of our sins. Yes, Jesus. And dear Lord, if there's anything that's in our hearts that would hinder us from fellowshipping with your Holy Spirit tonight, dear Lord, that you would take that away. And dear Lord, we'll thank you right now for that. We've, uh, we've lifted up this prayer list to you. We've we go through each one of them, and every one of them is very special to yes, us, dear Lord. Yes. And I know that each one of them is very special to you because they're your children. And we lift each one of them up to you, dear Lord. And we, we ask that you see to their needs and give them strength. And we know that the valleys that we go through strengthens us. And, and the strength that we receive is from you. No one else, dear Lord, you give us life. We are your children. And dear Lord, I pray that we would honor you in every way that we possibly can. And everything that we would say or do would be pleasing unto you. Dear Lord, please take care of these prayer lists, this prayer list, and see to it, dear Lord. We thank you for that right now. And dear Lord, I thank you for each one that's here tonight. It's good <coughs> fellowship with our brothers and sisters. And, and you have put, provided each one of us with one another that we would be a comfort to one another and encouragement to one another and love on one another. I thank you for each one of my brothers and sisters here tonight, dear Lord. And dear Lord, I ask that you lift up Brother Mike as he brings the message. Use your Holy Spirit to speak through him that we know that your powerful words flow right from your throne. And we're so honored and thankful for that. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Amen, amen. You would turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Now, I know that y'all have had uh, Brother David and Brother Cole uh, teaching y'all for a little bit. So I'm guessing everybody knows what Genesis is. But if you don't, guess what? This is the first book of the Bible. <laughs> In the beginning, amen. So we're going to look at a few things tonight, and I love, uh, my one of my favorite things is eschatology type teaching. I love verse by verse Bible study. I love breaking the Word of God down. Uh, and I love, I think this lady here is one, did I see you singing on TV the other day? Was that you, YouTube singing? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, it was good stuff. Just letting you know, I didn't, I, and I didn't get to see you a, a little while ago, but amen. I enjoyed that. You and your mom. Is that your mom beside work? Okay. Well, she's not here tonight. This is my aunt and my grandmother, and we all. Yep. Very well. Amen. All right, I just recognized you when you when I looked up, young lady. That was good stuff the other day. So eschatology is teaching where we break it down, and this is another way to have communion with our Father. When you read the scriptures, you are as a type of communion of having with our Heavenly Father. He speaks through His Word. Now, the Word of God is the living Word. It actually has life in it. It has the ability to give life. It is wonderful to get into your Bible. If you're not reading your Bible, you're missing out on life. Amen. If all you ever get is Sunday morning preaching, you're missing out on tonnage. You're missing out on so much because he has the ability to use his children to do his work, his hands and feet, until he gets ready to come back again. That's what you are for. 
The reason why you were created was for his good pleasure and to glorify him. Amen. That's the bottom line. Amen. Nobody ever has to question why. Oh, what's my purpose? Your purpose is for his pleasure. Yes. Your purpose is to glorify him. That's why you're created. And if somebody is not doing that, they will never feel fulfilled in any way. There'll be an emptiness that they'll never be able to, to, to replace. And people try all the time. People are constantly trying to fill that gap because it's missing in their life. They'll fill it, fill it with fake religion. They'll fill it with TV. They'll fill it with sports. I know people who know sports better than best theologians in the world know scripture. It just blows my mind. They know the stats of every player for many, many years. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why waste your time? <laughs> Don't make no sense to me. And listen, there's probably a lot of us right now that know a lot more things about work or play than we know about the scriptures. Yeah. But I'm telling you, if all you're getting is Sunday morning preaching, you're not getting everything that you need. Amen. 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 Right, at least we can all agree on that. If nothing else, let's all agree on that. So, if we're getting in the book of Genesis. This is how all how things begin. Now, I'm sure each one of you have heard or some man in your life has told you it was all Eve's fault. Yeah, if you ever heard that, raise your hand. <laughs> we got a head slapping hidden over here. It's all Eve's fault. Well, I tell you what. Instead of us speculating, let's just go to the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> and that's one thing we can count on to be true. Amen? Amen. A little side note here is I love the Word of God. And I love godly people. And I love people like uh, Billy Graham, different people who have, have lived their lives serving the Lord. And I even sometimes will read and pick up a book somebody has done. I've read commentaries, all these different things to help us get closer to the Lord. But let me tell you something. This is the only thing that I know that is true and perfect. So even when I read something by somebody that seems to be a godly person, I approach it in a way and say, Lord, give me discernment because I don't want to be misled in any way. Because guess what? There's false prophets out there. There's false teachers out there. Now, I want you to listen to Brother Mike tonight, but guess what? When you get home, you should make sure that he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I would say that about anybody, Brother Cole. I say that about anybody. You get with the Lord, and you get in this Word, and He'll show you what you need to know. Yeah. All right. Genesis chapter 2, uh, starting in 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not a shame. This is the state of innocence that they were in. You know what they were clothed in during this time? They didn't have no clothes on, but they were clothed with something. They were clothed with purity. They was clothed with innocence. And there was no reason to be ashamed. None whatsoever. Now we live in a world that I'm going down Highway 75 and I'm having to make sure that my eyes stay on the road because there's posters on each side on the way down here I see that it was a surf shop, Ron John. Now look, I'm from, from central Mississippi. I don't get to go out there and see women in bathing suits all the time. We try to keep our clothes on around the house. But I'm going down 75 and I'm seeing things that would try to draw your attention away from driving straight. Y'all get what I'm saying? It's a perfect analogy. We got to keep our old eyes on the path, amen? If you take them off for just a minute, you may stray off the road. Thank God for the little, little bumps on the side of the road when you start going off the road it makes you straighten back up because there's a lot of things out there the world's throwing at you that wants to take your eyes off the road. Amen. There's only one way and that path is narrow. Yes. The one that's broad leads to destruction, y'all. Yep. So, here we are. They are not ashamed because they don't even know how to be ashamed. Because things are so good in their life. That's what I love about little old kids. You ever had uh, your grandson, grandbaby, uh, two, three years old, they run around naked as a jaybird, and, and, and they don't even know it's wrong, it ain't, because they have the innocence still. Y'all laughing because y'all know y'all got to run all over the place. Some of y'all's a little too old to be doing that. But wouldn't it be great? 
to have such innocence that you didn't have to be ashamed. Yes. You know, I got red-faced just riding down the road seeing those a little shy. First thing I did, I'm driving like this, got I'm focused. And there's one that's kind of, there's a man on this side and a woman on this side. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. It's Ron John Surf Shop. Got a half-naked man over here and a half-naked woman over here. I'm driving down the road. Man, I'm focused, making sure everything's good. I'm looking at my rear view. Got everything. And then all of a sudden, there's this 30-foot tall woman over there. I glance up, and then I glance over, make sure my wife got caught me. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all ain't y'all acting innocent. I looked up. She's on this side, and my wife's on this side. <laughs> I don't like that kind of pressure. I'd rather not be. You didn't know that, did you? I like it. I know you knew it because you was looking at the other side of the guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tough enough with all, all the influence of the world. Yes. And you know what? What we shouldn't be is ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. Ashamed of the good news, ashamed of that sh People don't even sometimes like discussing it because it makes them uncomfortable. Let me tell you something. Jesus is good. Yeah. Starting in verse 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, Right here, we're talking about subtle, and first thing that comes to my mind is shade. I don't know if that, does that come to y'all's mind? Uh, just a little tricky or something like that, the subtlety of something, you know. Uh, but it also can be a good thing. It can also, here's what I understand by reading Genesis, is that when God created all these things, he said it was good. Yes. The intention wasn't to make the snake bad, he did make it where it had some abilities, apparently, to speak a little bit. Maybe it was limited. But even the snake had the option of allowing Satan to let it be used by him. Listen to what I'm saying. God's intention wasn't for Adam and Eve to fall. His intentions were to allow them to be able to grow spiritually. Could you imagine if we were all just robots? Sir, that wouldn't be no good. He wants us to love them and love them. Amen. Yes. Voluntarily, without without the you know without free will, it just don't even it's not even the same. But he allowed that free will. The first parents, our first parents, Adam and Eve, they missed the mark. And here she is speaking with a old subtle, maybe sly, could be. But also, if you think about a snake, they're pretty cunning and artsy. They're designed for for stealth and and all these different things. And, and uh, so we don't have to look at it as bad because up until this point, it wasn't bad. According to scripture, when he created these beasts and all these things, he said it was, he said it was good. <clears throat> Ever thought about that before? Huh. We need to realize that he didn't set man up for a fall. He has given us the ability to overcome. Each one of you are overcomers. If you have, if you have Jesus in your life, you're an overcomer. Yes. Yeah. You've had the ability. Now, some of us waited longer than others. Amen? I was 25 years old before I got saved. Uh, I, was, I was talking with Johnny Ray earlier because that's who we ended up contacting and, and getting with. And he, he waited to later on in his life to get things right with the Lord. He said the only regret he had is not doing it soon. Yeah. Anybody have a regret like that? I know it's me. But God does not design things for failure. He has designed it so that each person can be an overcomer. Amen? Amen. That's a good move, by the way, if y'all were into getting blind, you know, overcomer. Now the servant was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman with his limited speech, he opens the door up for Satan. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, Satan is always waiting on an opportunity. Let me tell you about Saul. It actually talks about him being like a roaring lion waiting to devour you. And they wait. And they're one of the most patient animals in the world. They'll sit there and wait for the perfect opportunity. Yeah. And when they see something that's just a little bit weak or a little bit hobbled, maybe you got a gallbladder, or maybe you got something going on in your life, cancer, he is just right there waiting on you. Yeah. As soon as you show a little bit of weakness, he's ready to pound. But he's also waiting out on an opportunity for you. First thing Satan does, he wants you to question God's word. And let me tell you something. I don't know about y'all, but I have questioned God sometimes. I don't understand. Uh, David Rain, if y'all ever get an opportunity to listen to David Rain, why do good things happen to God's people? Power. Life changer. Life changer for me. When I heard it. Listen to it. But why do good things happen? I've had that question. Man, look, back during COVID, I probably buried, I had probably 30 funerals that I did during that time. And good folks, too. Real good folks. Godly folks. And I believe it with all my heart. That was just a big old attack from Satan. But it was also an opportunity for God's people to figure out what was real and what was right. A lot of churches had a hard time making it through that day. It's been a few years. But it came down to how big is our God? He's way bigger than any of those things. Amen. So, why did this happen? He wants you to question God. Now, is it okay to question God? Yeah. I mean, he knows everything. Why wouldn't we go to him? Lord, will you show me something? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? But let me tell you something. Don't question this because if you're saved, you should know that this is complete truth. When I go to the scriptures, I may not understand something, but I know it's right. I don't even have to think about it. So that when it time does come for him to reveal things to me, hey, you know what? Ah, I get it. Anybody have a eureka moment? Absolutely, when you're reading through scriptures. Pretty amazing, huh? Sometimes he hasn't been ready for you to see what it was. Sometimes he hasn't revealed it. Sometimes you see something in Scripture and you visit it years down the road and it means some, something completely different to you. But it's still, and that's why we call it the living word. Because it speaks, it grows, it does all these things. But when we go questioning God, that's an opportunity for Satan to see weakness in your life. Amen. Don't question this. Don't question this. All right? That would be a good place for you to start. If you ever feel weak, don't let it be because you question this. Okay? And certainly he would be able to give you the strength to get through anything. Alright? So, he goes to the woman. He gives her in the, word, in the form of a question. And the woman said to her, uh, we may eat, three says, but of the fruit of the tree. It goes on to say, you shall eat, neither shall you touch it. Lest you die. One of the most terrible things in the world right here is when somebody adds to the Word of God. And it's not there. All right? That's why I always suggest you do your own study. You go and you look and, and you make sure that that's what it says. Okay. So what happens here is that God had given this instruction to Adam. Okay? After he had given Adam this instruction, he created Eve. So, let me ask you this. Pretty likely that Adam was the one that gave the instructions to Eve. Amen? Yeah. It doesn't say that he told, it says he told Adam. It doesn't say that he told Eve. It said created Eve after that. Okay? So, Eve may have gotten the word not to do that from her husband. I don't know. I don't suspect that Adam added to it. I suspect that what happened was is that Eve went as far as to add to it. It sounds pretty good though, doesn't it? No, I'm not supposed to eat it. I ain't even supposed to touch it. You know how we add to things sometimes? We call that legalism in religious terms. We start adding to the Word of God. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. You know, eh, Let's not just stick with 
you're not supposed to do this, let's add it. Make sure that they really don't do it, right? So it's starting to add to the Word of God. And what happens when you do that is you can lead folks astray. Mm -hmm. When you take Scripture out of context, when you take it out of context and use it, guess what? You can cause all kind of devastation. Man, I love when we learn about something that we keep it in context. We give even a little background of what's going on during that time so that we won't get confused. I can do all things through Christ to what? <coughs> and guess what? Most of the time, people just stop right there. But the fact is, is that if you keep on looking, you'll see where, well, guess what? You may get into a situation where you can't handle it, but he will give you a way. Amen. Now, if I always focused on just that part and giving it to somebody, they say, man, they're going to think that they, they can do, and certainly you can, but man, there's going to be times where you just, you're going to be too weak. And guess what? It's in our weakness where he shows his strength. So it's very sometimes dangerous, almost snake-like or subtle, to take scripture out of context. Okay? Give me another example. Uh, let's suppose that I wrote, Miss Wanda, I'm going to write you a letter. But you know, all I got your address. I'm going to put your name on it and uh, just going to put Wanda. And there's some different, how many Wandas are there here? Three, four, three, four. Uh, I'm just going to put Wanda on it. I'm going to address it to uh, the, the church mailbox right here. All right. Obviously, you probably go get it and check it, right? And would you automatically assume that it was for you if yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah. But let's say that I'm writing a four-page letter that I'm going to send to you. And after I got that four-page letter, I went and I said, you know what, I'm just going to send the second page and the last page to her. And I'm going to chunk it. And I put it in there and she gets it, she opens it up. And when all along, it was for a different Wanda, Right? But she opens up and she reads the second and last page of the letter. How much sense is that letter going to make? <laughs> ain't going to make a whole lot of sense. And they ain't even going to know who it's to because it was meant for some other one. And it turns out that it wasn't even supposed to go to this address. It was supposed to go down the road somewhere. You see what I'm saying? When you take, you can do that to Scripture if you're not careful. It will actually, and it can and has led people in the wrong direction. Guess what? Some religions have been based on Scripture taken out of context. All right? So I guess y'all are mature enough to know this. Amen? Yeah. So be careful. Especially when you're teaching your children. Now, all this has to do with this right here. That's being misled. That's how Satan works. When you're getting on to a child, right, what do you need to do? Not only do you tell them, hey, that's wrong, don't just tell them it's wrong. Why don't you just show them in Scripture where it's wrong? Now, I don't know about y'all. My kids give me limited authority anyway. They may, but guess what? They have a whole different respect for our Heavenly Father. So when you show them that something is wrong and they see it in Scripture, you know what? That has a little bit better concrete standing than it does with somebody else. So let me just give you that tidbit. But of the fruit of the tree, which in the mid, it goes on, and four says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's complete denial of God's word. That's what Satan will do. He said, that's not what it says. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and she, but you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? So he's given this thing to, to Eve to think about. He said, that's not what it means. Okay? That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, is you're going to become like God. Now let me ask you this. Is it okay... To want to be like God. Oh, gotcha. Absolutely. I want to be just like Jesus. I don't want to be like anybody else in this whole wide world. He is my example. I can make myself. I can go, and if I feel bad about myself, I'll go say, look, I might be pretty bad, but I ain't near about as bad as Bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I can make myself feel better comparing myself to somebody else. Y'all, I guess everybody in here, y'all probably know somebody that's a little bit worse than you. If you do, raise your hand. <laughs> y'all scared to raise your hand right now. 
Right? But when we compare ourselves to the perfect one, we all fall short. And that's just the way it is. I want to be like Jesus. That's what he tells me to do. That's why I want to be like him. I want to love like him. I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I want good things for others. I want to serve like he served. Right? So it's okay to want to be like God through Jesus Christ. In the proper way. But now he's given Eve a taste of what stimulates the mind. Alright? Get this. Get rich quick. Man, they did a study where people, the, the get rich quick idea actually stimulates the mind almost like a drug. So what happens is, is a lot of times people will come to you, they have different, we call them schemes, but there are certain things, there's all these kind of pyramid opportunities, there are all these promises of getting better. And, and now listen, I'm, I'm, I I fell for it. I, 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 I'll tell you right now. Any of you ever had a rainbow vacuum? <laughs> Great machine. Great machine. But the idea of getting one for free is even better. And all I got to do is sell a few of them and I can have my own rainbow back. Now let me ask you this. Any of you stayed up past midnight watching TV and ended up buying you some kind of ninja or something? Raise your hand. Ain't nobody going to raise their hand around. Nope. Oh, thank you. There are some. So what happens is, is, is you become a little bit more susceptible to things. To Maybe the more tired you are, the, the idea sounds great. You know, I, I tell you, a juicer sounds amazing, right? You order this juicer, it comes in the house. Man, you're excited. You're fixing to eat and be healthier than you ever have in your whole life. But then you go to the store and buy $50 worth of vegetables and you end up with a little juice like that <laughs> and a lot of rotten vegetables after a few days or something like that, you know, and, and you try to justify it and, and, and it doesn't turn out that way. And, I, and I'm sure it works for some people. But Satan loves to use you when you're weak. Yeah. He loves to question the Word of God. He loves all these different things. And that's why he is so now believe this. Satan was one of the most beautiful. The most beautiful of all the angels was a musical angel, was the head of the heavenly choir. I mean, all this. It's not going to appear. If sin will not appear to you as being ugly. <laughs> It'll look beautiful. Now if we can see sin like God saw. If we look to see sin, if we could smell sin like God smells it, we would run from it. But he's a trickster. He is wily in his ways. <clears throat> and he'll tempt you in every possible way with getting it fast, having it better, even tries to persuade Eve that being godlike is to have more wisdom and knowledge. I mean, who wouldn't want more wisdom and knowledge? But God says, you ask me for it, and I'm going to give it to you. I'll give it to you freely. But there's always a cost. The bottom line about this nakedness and being ashamed <coughs> is that Satan exposes you. Jesus covers you. He covers a multitude of sins. But Satan will expose things and make you so uncomfortable seeking to devour you and destroy you. He's our adversary, y'all. Don't, don't think he's not. And he'll come to you in the most beautiful ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. He didn't get the big Satan by being stupid. Right? He's been setting up traps for the saints for years and years and years. Can y'all still hear me back there? Ain't nobody fell asleep yet, have you? 
Right. <laughs> and a servant said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye are of, that your eyes shall be open, ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and that the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also with her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, I want you to see a couple of things here. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. How about the lust of the eyes right there? Now, if you have a breath in you, then most of us have dealt with this before. Amen. Right? The lust of the eyes. And then it was pleasant to the eyes. The lust of the flesh. And the tree it would be desired to make one wise. And that's the pride of life. These three things, y'all. That's the downfall of a many, a many a good person. The pride of life. Anybody know anybody prideful? Hmm? Ain't always pleasant to be around them, is it? I think I'll save that for another time. I'm not getting a lot of good eyeballs over here. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they showed, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So here's what happens. You start feeling, and this is what they start to feel. You feel the guilt. You feel the shame. You feel all these different things. Man, I tell you, I'm no stranger to these things, man. When I was growing up, I had felt the things that I had done in my life. Man, I used to think that the sin in my life, who cares? It don't, I'm, I'm only doing it myself. It doesn't bother anybody else. Let me tell you something about sin. Sin affects everybody around you. Yeah. It's not limited to just yourself. People who drink, I, all these different problems and issues that people have, they think it just affects them. Leave me alone. I just do it. I'm not hurting nobody, but you're hurting everybody because they love you. Sin affects everybody. And it's rotten, y'all. I wish and pray that we could see sin more like Christ sees it. The one that knew no sin, that had to become sin for us on our behalf. This evening, let me tell you, Satan exposes everything. You ain't hiding anything. He's just waiting on the right opportunity to use it. But because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on Calvary, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Amen. I am free from that burden of sin. No longer am I bound by it. No longer does the weight of sin have I got to carry. But you know what? Old devil says, are you sure about that? He put a question mark behind it. And he'll allow you to bring things up in your mind. And then you start wondering about them and stuff like that. And guess what? Jesus is like, don't you know that's buried in the depths of the sea as far as the east is from the west? Why don't you leave that alone? I've chosen to forget that. Why do you keep bringing it up? Because old Satan loves to expose things. Now, I ain't saying come to church Sunday morning naked. I, pre I really ain't. <laughs> Please wear your clothes. But I will say this. You don't no longer have to worry about being exposed by Satan. Because Christ can be your cover. Amen. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. Amen? Amen. Alright, does anybody have any questions about what we've gone over? Did anybody in the back row hear anything? There will be a test right after service. I'm just carrying on. All right. If not, I don't know what we do. We usually stand to dismiss, and, and, and then we have a little fellowship, hug on each other. If y'all come, if, you, if I haven't met you, I'd love to meet you and talk with you. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you Sunday morning. Amen. Would y'all please stay? Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you so much for this opportunity for 
the saints to meet together, to get in your word, and Lord, hopefully draw us closer to you. Uh, Lord, uh, by the edification and perfection, Lord Father, that you seek for us. We do want to be like you. You are our, our example, Lord Father, and we thank you for being the perfect one. We just ask you to be with these prayer requests tonight, Lord Father, lift them up to you. Uh, Lord, I, for Tony, Lord, I, I know he's hurting. I pray for the doctors, Lord, that they'll get things straight on him, Lord, and have his surgery, get the feeling better, Lord Father. But I know your hand can also just touch them, Lord Father, and make them whole. So, Lord, uh, I'm selfish that way. I just ask you to take care of them in that way. And for all these other prayer requests, Lord Father, I thank you for the answer. I thank you for the ones that receive the final healing, Lord Father, and they are in your presence right now. But we ask you to be with their family. And Lord, thank you for this opportunity for each one of us. Lord, it wasn't just an opportunity for me and Robin to meet new people, Lord. It's for an opportunity for people to come here to be able to be an encouragement to one another, Lord. To edify one another and to draw closer to one another. Lord, for the ones in the back, Lord, the teachers and the kids, Lord, I, I pray that you moved in a mighty way tonight in your life, Lord Father, and I thank you so much. We ask you to be with us for the rest of this week, Lord. Visit with us, Sunday, Lord Father, and, and just take over. We love you, and we ask you just to give us traveling grace on our way home, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.